The hunger of one is the shame of us all. A food secure Africa, free from hunger and poverty, that is our vision. Let's join our hands, our minds and our collective will to banish the shame and suffering of lack from the face of this continent forever. FANAPAN hosted its 2011 Partners Meeting in Pretoria, South Africa on 13 June 2011. This meeting was one of FANAPAN's flagship annual events and provided an opportunity for the network and its partners to engage on the various issues, activities and projects that FANAPAN undertakes. The meeting was attended by 83 stakeholders from African governments, private sector, civil society organizations, development partners, farmers' organizations and research institutions. Members of the Board of Governors of FANAPAN, the Regional Secretariat as well as node institutions attended. What is our vision as FANPAN? Our vision is an Africa that is free from hunger and poverty. And this, we believe, can be done through appropriate policies. What is our reason for existence? Number one, we have to create linkages between government and civil society. Secondly, as a network, we need to build capacity. And unless we create space for us to talk, others will make the policies for us and we will be shortchanged. Third, we need to stimulate an appetite for evidence that only doesn't come from within, but comes from independent stakeholders whose core business is to provide uncontaminated facts to inform policy processes. It's a complex structure, it's a network, and if you pull out one country, Zambia, we have there up to 600 members broken down by seven governments, about 20 civil society organizations, 12 private sector, and 10 research organizations, including the University of Zambia. That, ladies and gentlemen, is to show you the complexity of the network. But the beauty is that when we sit in Pretoria, we can touch the small-scale farmer in Zambia through our node, which has a secretariat under the Agriculture Consultative Forum in Lusaka, but every month they meet their 44 members and update them on issues, on the work we do, and all the finer issues that are happening in country. And that, to me, explains the importance of having a name and address within the network, within the partnership of people who are the prime movers of the policy agenda. Under the Food Systems Thematic Thrust, FANAPAN program managers presented their work in support of the Comprehensive Africa Agricultural Development Program, or CADIP, and the PIPOD 2 project. The overall objective of the project is to build African and European multi-stakeholder partnerships in ARD, contributing to the achievement of the MDGs. The focus of the project is to facilitate innovative multi-stakeholder partnerships to participate in the development of proposals and the implementation of research work and also this leading to the adoption and the uptake of the research evidence. Now one thing that came through was that in terms of the leadership of the projects and proposals, it came out that uh, it's usually the European partners who are leading the consortiums and what we'd like to see in this initiative it is to see the African partners taking a leading role in the implementation of research and also the drafting of the proposals. We'd like to see increased knowledge of European funding opportunities amongst the ARD stakeholders. FANAPAN program managers reported on three initiatives that are undertaken under the Natural Resources and Environment Thematic Thrust. They are the Limpopo Basin Development Challenge, Climate Change Initiatives, and conservation agriculture. We've got an upcoming opportunity uh, in November here in the basin, and this is a brief plug for the third International Forum for Water and Food. It's a CPWF challenge program event and it's going to be a rare opportunity for global reflection and learning. 
and it will bring together researchers from the other five basins, but we'll also have decision makers, next users and end users to try to ground truth some of our science and ensure relevance. In conservation farming, there are a number of aspects of that you want to look at. There is food security itself. Uh, you want to get uh, a smallholder farmer food secure. You want to make sure that uh, as they engage in, in agriculture, they also begin to earn income from that. Now, in any income, they, you get it through uh, higher productivity and they sell the excess. But also in our case, we've developed a component called carbon credit. Uh, to what extent can we facilitate a smallholder farmer uh, to get two things. One, to get higher yields, uh, get food secure, but also in addition to that, can we facilitate the generation of uh, carbon credits, which in the end we sell. That becomes additional income. As you are aware, there's so much climate change studies out there, but we are trying to gather the, the, to gather the research and come up with a database so that we can share that database as cl climate researchers, policy makers, or civil society. And currently we have about 8,000 contact database and it's, it's still growing. There's a number of partners that we're working on, on this project. They are the national universities in the three countries, and then we have the University of Cape Town, which is going to be the, doing the downscaling, as well as the crop modeling component. And we also have IFPRI and World Vision who help us to communicate uh, the outputs at a community level. And as well, we have to upscale this, uh, this data so that we can <coughs> communicate it at a national and regional level. And this is being done on a smaller scale. Just three countries, three districts. And in the future, we are trying to upscale this so that it can be more regional. And hopefully, if we have more funding, it will go towards that. A lot of Africans still need education in terms of climate change and its impact on their lives and livelihoods. We also need to have our own African research because we are relying everything that you read about. It's information done, research done by people from the US, from Europe. Where is the Africa research? We don't have that. The figures that are thrown around are from the US, are from Europe. Where are African figures? That's why I guess people in Africa tend to look at it and say, ah, they talk about climate change, it's not affecting us, it's not impacting us. But it is affecting and impacting us. The Household Vulnerability Index, or HVI, which is a statistical tool for measuring household vulnerability, was presented under the Social Protection and Livelihoods Thematic Thrust. The tool has been piloted in partnership with World Vision in three countries, namely Lesotho, Swaziland and Zimbabwe, and resulted in the development of livelihoods databases on asset ownership by rural communities, which in turn can be used to inform policy and practice. We are actually combining the HVI statistics together with the GIS uh, functionality so the community can actually pic graphically or pictor pictorially see what is happening within their communities. So the HVI tool is one used as a, 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 a base for information uh, for our targeting and programming. Secondly, it is also used as a, a monitoring tool whereby you can do your trend analysis. When you do your monitoring, you can keep on feeding your data because each and every household is actually allocated a specific ID which will help you to trace what has happened in a particular household. And thirdly, what is important is we also view the HVI tool, especially the database, as a management tool where you can even pull up some learnings and discuss some issues, inform policy and inform your programming. At the end of the day, donors want evidence. You know, how, how, is the resources that they're providing to, for, to World Vision, for example. Is it having an impact? Is it reaching the right beneficiaries? And this house, uh, tool, HVI, has really helped us to prove to the donors that yes, we are targeting the most vulnerable population, we are reaching out to those that are really in need, and it's, you know, it's, 
it's a transparency situ uh, it's a transparency issue you know and we are able to prove to our donors that we have done a th thorough assessment thorough analysis thorough monitoring of the situation at the field level and the good the news is that we are also going to use this HEVI in our other projects and programs as well for example our child sponsorship program where we in a pro helping children and also you are going to use this tool in other projects and people within world which I'm telling you are really excited about it Two FANAPAN projects are being undertaken under the Agricultural Productivity and Markets thematic thrust. They are the Harmonized Seed Security Project or HASP and the Women Accessing Realigned Markets or WARM project. In the first year, most of the work that FANAPAN has done has been conducting the baseline studies, benchmarking, development of the M&E framework, as well as training stakeholders along the seed value chain. During the next year, our focus will be on the realignment of the seed legislation, and we are glad that Sanso, our partner, who helped us also when we were doing the seed certification audits, are present in this meeting. Another issue we are going to look at is the re-equipping of institutions through procurement of small-scale seed processing and storage equipment for smallholder seed producing communities, as well as procurement of vehicles for seed certification institutes, so that the seed inspectors that look at the seed when it is still growing in the field are able to travel to the seed fields. The engagement within the WOM project, one, it has created another platform where women, women farmers themselves can directly engage with the policymakers, especially taking advantage of the decentralization structures that are now being encouraged in Malawi. So you find that even at district level, women are able to articulate their issues as well as engage with, uh, in the development, development processes of planning at, at that level. In Malawi now, we are talking about surpluses of food. And now Malawi is a hunger fighter. But at the same time, we need money. Without market, we can't find money. So access to market, it's a still a challenge. We produce more, but no market for. How can market development incentivize the improvement of livestock production in the smallholder uh, sector? The hypothesis that we put forward is that effective markets will provide farmers with incentives to invest in their livestock. That's increased productivity, offtake and quality. But for this to work, it is important that all other uh, components fit, that is your feed, your animal health, and the breeding issues are in order. With the implementation of the one project, actually it comes to accelerate what we have already been doing. For example, the issue of uh, making sure that women speak in one voice for the respect of their rights, because the one project, the, the warm project that uses uh, theater as a means of communication. I think this enables women to actually freely speak about what their concerns and also engage with the government at different levels for them to be their concerns being responded. 70% of Africans derive their livelihood from the soil. 70% uh, of Africans don't have access to clean water. 70% uh, of Africans don't have access to uh, electricity, and you know, it's 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 the same 70 percent. You know, basically, it's the same people who are trapped in this uh, poverty trap. Um, so agriculture is really important. You know, if we can modernize agriculture, raise the productivity of agriculture workers, uh, it's you know, it's it'll benefit the women because they're the they're the, the you know the greater number of farmers in Africa is women and children. So you know, if we can make sure that agriculture really becomes a source of income. Uh, you know, just being able to add value, you know, in terms of, you know, if, the, if you have good roads that are in place, if you have working markets that are in place, if you, if you just have, you know, uh, better educated uh, farmers, uh, if you have better technology. So that means also extending the 
or you know, putting in place extension services that really work properly and getting that whole sector to be the engine of growth. You know, getting the private sector involved in agriculture as well is important. So, you know, truthfully, it's, it's, it's a huge potential to be unlocked in the, uh, from the agricultural sector. FANAPAN's communication and advocacy program creates awareness and appreciation of the network through dissemination of evidence-based research to inform policy formulation at all levels. So we've been able to actually get Dr. Sabanda on the um, global advisory panel of the Guardian Global Development website, um, which not only gives Fanerpan um, and Dr. Sabanda personally more um, exposure, but it also gives an ongoing platform for um, advocacy and communications um, through perhaps the, the best um, you know, global media platform that exists. Fanapan's efforts under the Institutional Strengthening and Capacity Building Thematic Thrust are aimed at ensuring that the network, its partners and key stakeholders at national and regional levels are strengthened to effectively participate in policy processes. We've seen a major growth in terms of partnerships with regional organizations and also international organizations. In terms of uh, total number to date, we have a total number of uh, 65 partnership agreements with different uh, stakeholders like reg regional economic communities, we've got two, that's your Comesa and SADC, uh, national governments, four sub-regional organizations, farmer organizations, uh, private sectors, university, a major key stakeholder, civil society organizations, and also international organizations organizations in CG centers. Partners were given the opportunity to highlight what they considered necessary to move African agriculture forward. Tackling agriculture tackles uh, various things at the same time. It tackles household food insecurity, it tackles people's um, employment needs, and finally it tackles people's incomes, and finally there are so other social development needs such as health and education. And therefore tackling uh, food security and agriculture it's primarily, literally, talking to the heartbeat of poverty reduction and, and social well-being in the region. And therefore, it's generating a lot of interest, and rightly so. I think it should, uh, that interest should continue and probably be upped, uh, coupled by resources and policy environment to make it even better. I think essentially what we're looking at is to see that um, the sustainability of FANAPAN is, is firmly entrenched. Uh, uh, more so the institutional capacity of FANAPAN itself. So what we have been trying to look at is to ensure that we keep on building the credibility that we have been trying to build through enhanced uh, performance, accountability and transparency, not only of the programs we undertake, but of the functioning and the management of the, of the secretariat or if you like the institution as it itself. Uh, and it's been a great challenge because uh, the work we undertake, policy research and analysis, is basically something which is intangible. You can't quantify it, you can't measure it. And as a consequence, a lot of people, including donors, want a big bang for their money. And they can't see the longer term benefit of uh, policy research and analysis. So it's been, it's been a bit of a battle. But I think more and more what we are now seeing, even with public policy makers uh, in, um, a, and even with civil society, farmers organization, is that more and more people are gravitating towards what we call evidence-based advocacy. Clearly, the importance of strong partnerships cannot be overestimated. It is clear that for our environment, we need the human institution. People first should be our policy. We also need technologies because without technology we cannot improve the natural resource base and utilize it. But we need effective institutions so that we can locate our action. But most important for us at FANAPAN, we need political and economic environment that is conducive for all the actors to manifest uh, themselves.